Hello and welcome to part D of Phi A5. Ah, the last part. You the know, for some part. of them, because we're only going to do astrophysics, if they're doing medical physics or, or whatever the other one is, turning Applied points, physics. this is the points, last yeah. time they're going to see us, or hear us, I should say. You will never see us. But wait a minute, they could always subscribe and look at all our other videos. Ah, little, see what I did there. Cheeky little it was shameless self It was shameless is yeah. what it was. Shameless. Okay, let's just get straight into it. Uh, this is... Uh, the final part of the physics area level, as we said, and we're doing ideal gases. I'm Will Khan. And I'm Connor Durkin still. Uh, but to be honest, you should probably know that by now. Anyway, as per usual, if you have any questions, you're very welcome to ask in the comments or on Facebook, Twitter, or if you're being really adventurous, Google+. Plus. <laughs> yeah, no chance we're going to answer that. Anyway, onwards. Internal energy and temperature. The internal energy of an object is the energy of its molecules due to their individual move movements and positions. The internal energy is due to its temperature is its thermal energy, but there may be other factors to the total internal energy like magnetism. The internal energy of an object changes due to heat or energy transfer by radiation to or from the object, or work done on or by the object, including that by electricity. A molecule is the smallest particle of a pure substance that is characteristic of that substance. Around now we should tell you about gases, liquids and solids, but as you've been doing that since year seven, we're going to move swiftly Swiftly on. and efficiently. The internal energy of an object defined is the sum of the random distribution of the kinetic and potential energies of its molecules. On to temperature, which in scientific terms is the degree of hotness Singing of hat, the object. Hat, hat. There are two scales you need to care about in this measurement for this hotness, not Fahrenheit, you old-fashioned or American so-and-sos. The Celsius scale of temperature in degrees C, defined in terms of zero degrees C being the temperature of pure melting ice, and 100 degrees C being the temperature of steam at standard atmospheric atmospheric pressure. The absolute scale of temperature is Kelvin, which is defined in terms of absolute zero. Okay, with zero K, which is the lowest possible temperature, not to be confused with 4K, which is the highest commercially available resolution for TVs. Not anymore, it's actually 8K now. Is it now? Yeah, oh, they wow. doubled it before. We've we outdated ourselves. And really. the triple point of water, 273.16 Kelvin, where ice, water and water vapour can coexist in thermodynamic All coexist equilibrium. in peace. Moving on, to convert from Celsius, you add two, add on 273.15 to get Kelvin, but adding 273 will just be fine for most. Now we've examples. brushed past the lowest temperature in the union in the universe. In the union, <laughs> yes, we'll absolute zero. So coming back to it, an object at absolute zero has minimum internal te energy, regardless of the substances the that object consists of. None of its particles are moving in any way at yeah. all. If you want to know where the universe is coldest, we've actually been there. So go check out the holiday part two. Taking the Swiss. The Swiss cheese. Specific heat capacity now. Lovely little stuff. Changing the temperature of an object depends on its mass, energy, uh, energy supplied to it, and the substance it's made from, obviously the material. Which brings us nicely onto the specific heat capacity. Now for the definition with Mr. Wilcox. The specific heat capacity, C, of a substance is the energy needed to raise the temperature of a unit mass of the substance by one Kelvin without a change of state. The unit is joule per kilogram per Kelvin. It has no name, so we shall call it. Jeffrey. 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 Right, okay, for water, it is 4,200, which you should probably know, along with these other helpful additions. Now, to raise the temperature of a, ma of a temperature of mass M of a substance from temperature T1 to T2, the energy needed delta Q is given by MC multiplied by, in brackets, T2 minus T1. Yep, so change in temperature. There are obviously ways to measure specific heat capacity in li liquids and gases, so have a quick glance at that in the textbook so you're familiar if it comes up, but yeah. we're not mentioning it because it's so long and... Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just just look at the textbook. You don't need us for everything. Yeah. Change of state now, not like political systems or, you know, the welfare state being dismantled. As anything. you probably know, there are three states a substance can be in. Solid, liquid and vapour uh, or gas. Three or four. Uh, when a solid is heating at, at its melting point, its atoms vibrate so much that they break free from one another. The energy needed to melt a solid at its melting point is referred to as its latent heat of fusion. Ooh, lovely word. When a liquid is heated at its boiling point, the molecules gain enough kinetic energy to overcome the bonds that hold them close together. As with other the energy needed to vaporise a liquid is referred to as its latent heat of vaporisation. The specific latent heat of a substance is therefore the energy required to change the state of a unit mass without change of temperature. The energy Q is is given by the specific latent heat multiplied by the mass with units joules per kilogram. One last little little thing. With temperature time graphs, there will be a constant temperature while the substance is undergoing a change of state. So do remember that little flat bit, little plateau. Yeah. On so the latent when state changes and heat capacity when there's a temperature change. Lovely stuff. The experimental gas laws now. Now, there are three experimental gas laws. Boyle's, Charles's and... The pressure one, yep. which we're not called Jeffrey. Yeah, okay. Boyle's law states that for a fixed mass of gas at compass temperature, PV equals a constant, where P is the gas pressure and V is the gas volume. Charles's law states that the at a constant pressure, V 
Constant, oh, so constant pressure, V over T equals a constant, where V again is the gas volume and T is the temperature in Kelvin. Yes, and finally the pressure law, Not which Jeffrey. states that a P over T equals a constant, where P is the pressure and T is the temperature, again in Kelvin. All in Kelvins here. The ideal gas law. As you can imagine, when you're talking about a gas, you're talking about the collective average of molecules that make up gases slash liquids slash solids. Now, a man who sounds like avocado, Mr. Avogadro, if you're a chemist, you'll know that he's amazing, hypothesized that equal volumes of gases at the same temperature and pressure contain an equal number of molecules. He came up with a constant, which he named the guacamole constant. Funnily enough, that's not what he actually did. No, he didn't call it that at all. Na, the Avogadro constant, defined as the number of atoms in exactly 12 grams of carbon. 12. The 12 yep. bit, not the 14. Radioactive, though, so remember that. To four, uh, to four significant figures, it is 6.023 times 10 to the minus... T so, sorry, no. 6.023 times 10 to the 23. No minus. No minus. No it. minus. If you take away anything You'll be 46 from this. <laughs> figures out. A substance containing Na of identical particles, molecules, or atoms is defined as one, as one mole of that substance, which is chemistry here. It's lovely stuff. The number of moles in a certain quantity of substances is molarity, the unit being mole. M-O-L. Mole. 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 Mole, 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 mole. Edna. Is that film too dated to make references to now? And guest. And guest. The molar mass of a substance is a mass that one mole of a substance would have and it's equal to its relative atomic or relative molecular mass in grams. So the number of moles in a substance is usually given by n, the number of molecules given by n multiplied by the Avogadro's constant. So big N equals n multiplied by Na. Yeah. Yeah. It's on there somewhere. You can combine the three earlier laws to get the ultimate equation. <laughs> PV over T equals a constant for a fixed mass of ideal gas. Putting the putting values for one mole of an ideal gas at room temperature and atmospheric pressure, you get the constant 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole. This is the I. This is the molar gas constant R. The value of PV over T increases or decreases if there is more or less gas present. The amount is measured in moles at N, so the constant becomes NR, where N is the number of moles in the gas present. So you get PV equals NRT. This is the ideal gas equation, where V is the volume of gas, P is the pressure, and temperature T is in Kelvin. Kelvin, lovely stuff. This equation is for ideal gas, and it works well as an approximation for gases at low pressure and fairly high temperatures. Now, a variation of this is of this equation is PV equals NKT, which is the equation of the state of an ideal gas where the Boltzmann constant, K, equals R over NA. Well, you know what R is, you know what NA is, so I'm assuming you can get K. And N is the number of molecules, big N. Big N, little N, cardboard box. A few helpful reminders for this topic, always use Kelvin. There are 1,000 litres in a metre cubed. Be careful of switches from kilograms to grams, etc. And one mole of gas at room temperature and pressure, uh, room temperature and atmospheric pressure, rather, which is about 101 kilopascals, takes up around 0 0.0224 metres cubed. Just a little, a little fit. I like that. I like that little helpful hint you well, leave in there. 24 decimetres cubed if you're a chemist. Decimeters, get decimeters. out. We, decimeters. Don't, we, do, we do not speak of decimeters it's in physics. It's still in the same measure of units. No, it's just one you no. don't like. Leave. You're weird. You're Leave. a maths person. Leave. On to kinetic you. theory of gases, part one. We've separated this into, I think, three parts. Because it's so lovely. God, but oh. we've done it all, and you just need to be aware of it, I so sit back and relax. Go. The gas laws can be explained by assuming the gas consists of point molecules moving about at random, continually colliding with the container walls. Each impact causes a force on the container. The force of many impacts is the cause of the pressure of the gas on the container walls. The molecules in an ideal gas have a continuous spread of speeds. Individual molecules' speeds change when they collide with other gas molecules, but the distribution stays the same provided there's no temperature change. The root mean square speed of the molecules, where C1, C2, etc., represent the, represent the speed of the individual, individual molecules, and N is the number of molecules in the gas. If you increase the temperature, the molecules move faster on average, so the root mean square speed increases. The distribution curve becomes flatter and broader, but overall the area under the curve should remain exactly the same. The kinetic the kinetic theory equation for an ideal gas consisting of n identical molecules, each of mass m, in a container of volume V, has pressure given by PV equals a third n m, and then the root mean square speed all squared. Oh, so which is it's kind of just the mean squared. Yeah, it's, it's, it's really weird. To get this equation, you have to make several assumptions. One, that the molecules are point molecules, their volume negligible to the volume of the container. Two, they do not attract each other. Three, they move about in continual random motion. Four, any collisions are elastic. And lastly, each collision with the container surface is of much shorter duration than the time between impacts. Now, the spec says that you need to be aware of the derivation of this formula. So, here goes. Pay attention, please. <sighs> Right, are you ready for this, Connor? I shall only say this once. Are you ready? Yeah. Okay. 
So this uh, <laughs> this is all to do with a box, and it has dimensions LX by LY by LZ. It can be cardboard, it can be plastic, whatever you want. It's a box. It's a lovely box. A guess in the box with molecules with velocities C N, where U V and W are components of the velocity in the X Y and Z directions, respectively. The speed of the individual yellows molecules squared uh, C one squared equals U one squared plus V one squared plus W one squared. On That's impact, Pythagoras. On impact with this blue side of the box, the momentum of the particle will change from mu to minus mu. So the total change of momentum is minus 2 mu. As speed is distance over time, uh, time is distance over speed. So the time between impacts on this face is given by 2 lx over u1. Lovely stuff. Therefore, using Newton's second law, the force on the surface of the box is given by the change of momentum over time, which we have. And it's minus m u1 squared all over i, or lx rather. Yes. Ix. <laughs> So, so due to Newton's third law, the force on the particle is equal and opposite, so it must, uh, so it is, sorry, plus m u1 squared all over lx. Now, pressure is force divided by area, by the area of the blue side being ix multiplied by iy. Lx oh, multiplied by ly. Right, L. You know, replace everything I say with L's. There we go. Yeah, there so aren't the, any I's in this entire I don't thing. Know. So the pressure is given by m u1 squared over lx, ly, lz, or mu1 squared over the v volume of the box. Yes, see? It's turned into the volume, volume. because there was already an volume. LX there. Isn't that volume. cheeky? Cheeky now, volume. For n molecules in the box, all moving at different velocities, the total pressure is the sum of the individual pressures, so P1 plus P2, etc., all the way to Pn. We know what pressures each of uh, what the pressures each of these particles exert in the x-plane, so sub that in. And their mass and the box volume is constant, so take that, like, yeah. Next step is the clever bit. The sum of the velocity divided by the number of particles n will give the mean of the particle's speed squared. Yes, indeed. It's now, to get n from stuff. nowhere, uh, yeah, basically, we've plucked n from nowhere, but we do need Thin it. Air. So we multiply by n over n, which is just 1. So we can multiply things by 1 because they're the same. And so that's where that n's come from. Just explain that. Now, the bottom n is used for the mean because uh, the, a mean is the sum of them divided yeah. by how many there are, which is n, leaving one left. So that's why you have n, m multiplied by the mean of u squared all over v. Lovely stuff. Now, everything we've done can be done for the other side of the box, so we can use the same pressure formula using w and v. Yeah. So we've just used u and lx at the minute, but as you can see, because it's oh, everything's uniform and fine, we can do that on all of them. Therefore, adding them together, 3p equals the sum of the means of the speeds squared all over v. So you take the p over in this equation and voila. We're going to sub that for the root mean square speed, which unhelpfully reads backwards to what it is. You have to square the mean, then root. It's, yeah, root mean square. Square, so square, square then mean. mean, then root. Yeah, to read it backwards, it's fine. <sighs> read your entire physics paper backwards, it'll make you much better. Yeah, you might as well, actually. Yeah, do, do it for the back, you know, long answer questions, lovely. But using what we've just said and the equation for c squared at the top of the slide, and you can gain the final equation, PV equals NM multiplied by CRMS squared over 3. I can't believe you got to read the final equation. I did get to read the final I'm equation. I'm so, I'm so You're jealous. so jealous. You're jealous. Uh, oh, oh, there's another bit. The last bit, kinetic <laughs> theory of gases proof 2. Uh, basically, the last bit involves finding an expression for kinetic energy. Kinetic energy, half mv squared, for one molecule can be found by dividing the total kinetic energies of all the molecules and dividing by how many there are, obviously. Yeah. This happens uh, to also give you half of mc, of uh, the root mean squared or the speed squared, uh, similar to the last slide. Now, the higher the temperature of the gas, the greater mean kinetic energy of each molecule, and it is hypothesised that it equals 3 kT over 2, where k is the Boltzmann constant from earlier in the video, also known as R over Na. Yeah, uh, or avocado's constant, Avoc Na. Avocado, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Assuming that Acamole. this is true, we can cancel the 2s and sub in what is left into the equation we had last time. The 3s cancel to get PV equals NKT. NK also uh, also equals NR, little nr, for reasons that we mentioned when we spoke about the laws earlier, because it's moles versus yeah. the number of particles. Subbing that in, you get PV equals NRT, which is the ideal gas equation. Oh, you've got to read it again. I know. We know that this is right, so our assumption must be right. The assumption we made. Correctamundo. Right. Therefore, the mean kinetic energy of a molecule of an ideal gas is given by 3kT over 2. You can rearrange this to get 3NRT over 2, which is for a little n moles, but that's by the belly. By and that's it. That is the whole of Phi A5, uh, except for the other the astrophysics, optional. medical physics, or uh, turning points turning in points. physics. I keep forgetting the last one. We're doing astrophysics because it's, it's cool. most interesting, it's and really we've cool. only got time to do one. Yeah. So that's what we'll be doing, unfortunately. I'm very sorry for doing any of the other ones, 
but you can go look at some other videos instead. I'm sure they exist out there, but they won't be as good as ours, but you know, yes. you, you just have to manage. There you we are. So, thank you very much for listening. I have been Will Khan. And I have been Connor Durkin. I feel it's quite sad. It's like our children have grown up. We've taken them through two years of physics We've revision been, now. You know, fuddling along not really yeah, giving them anything exactly. really interesting but we, we try bless ah, us and we just finished on the nasty proof that they don't actually need to know they just need to be aware of yeah well uh, it's, it's you know it's you know they're sending them off to university and you just give them a quick smack on the way out just to be yes. sure <laughs> <laughs> make <laughs> sure they're adults they're going off to okay. begin your life quick smack there you go that's what life's got in store for you right do the outro come on speak out while I'm singing right okay thank you very much for listening I know you've spent a lot of time and effort from your half of it just listening to us for the last eight or nine videos thank you so much and please please just try to revise I'll be doing the same thing I've been coming back and this has been Will Khan who's humming in I think it's driven him mad actually I think he's lost his mind wouldn't surprise me thank you very much for watching goodbye <laughs>